As it turns out, a lot of my viewers are snakeless. They're doing their research before purchasing their snake, which is fantastic because that will put them squarely on the path of being a really great snake keeper. But when it comes time to purchase your slithering friend, how do you even go about, how do you find the right color? What if you want a, one that looks like that? How do you... So today we're talking about how to buy a snake. Now you can find a snake just about anywhere and just buy it, but is that the right snake for you? And I'm not talking about species, I'm talking about that individual snake. You don't want to have to settle just because something is convenient to buy. So maybe you got into snakes because you saw a pied ball python and you went, what? How is that even? A snake, I've never seen anything like that before in my life. I have to have one. So you did a bunch of research. You found out that it was a ball python and you learned all about them. And now you're ready to buy your snake. But the only pieds that are available are on Morph Market and they're all the way on the other side of the country. And you don't want to have a snake shipped to your house because that seems insane. Now there's a normal ball python down the street at the pet store that you could pick up today. It's a little skinny and it might have mites, but you could have it today. Hold on there, friend. I'm going to try to help you out here. Behind the camera, as always, is my brother, Kent. Hello. Kent, how would you go about buying a snake? Why would I ever buy a snake? Hypothetically. I, it's not even a hypothetical situation. I wouldn't even, not even in pretend land would I buy a snake. You know what, Kent? I'm going to buy you a snake. Don't even. Let's cut to the unboxing. No. Hi, welcome to Kent's Corner. Today, I'm supposed to be unboxing a snake, and the only reason that I'm even attempting this is because the box is from Ikea, and I don't think Ikea sells snakes. This is probably a piece of furniture that Bob expects me to put together that has no instructions and no vowels. Let's get to the unboxing. stuffed animal snake. It's a puppet. I don't like it, but I can use it for illustration purposes. I have extensive training in ventriloquinarianism. I'm gonna name him Eric the Murderer. Eric, why do you enjoy sizing up people and then eating them for snacks? Because I'm a snake and that's what we do. That's that's straight from a snake's mouth. So, thank you for watching Ken's Corner, everyone's favorite segment on the Green Room Python's internet channel. All right, Kent, you are now the proud owner of your own snake. You could have named him something more pleasant. There's nothing unpleasant about the name Eric. You named him Eric the Murderer. I think it's a delightful name because what I love to do to people is murder them, sometimes worse. I think my snake puppet idea backfired. You can't get a real snake at Ikea, but you can get them elsewhere. Let's talk about where. Pet stores, rescues, private individuals, so like Craigslist, Craigslist type situations, and online. So let's discuss those in that order. I'm not down on pet stores at all. If I have to buy something at a pet store, I try to support my local mom and pop shop over the big chain stores, but no problem with the chain stores either. Some pet stores have cool animals, but most of them are not going to have much of a selection at all. If you walk into a chain store and they have ball pythons, they're probably only going to have one or two. And, you know, normals, there might be a morph in there, but you're just not going to have a selection. You're not going to have much to pick from. Usually the people that, you know, buy from these chain stores walked into the store looking for dog food and came out of the store with dog food and a snake and they didn't necessarily give much thought you know about what type of snake they were getting um what morph it was what the temperament was stuff like that it's an impulse buy but if you're watching this video it's probably not going to be an impulse buy now if you live in a bigger city like i do there's a good chance that you'll be able to find a reptile specific shop 
which is cool. A lot of times they have really cool animals. Sometimes they're not kept in the best conditions in the world, which is unfortunate. That's just a side note. But also keep in mind, you know, we've talked about the fact that it's pet stores are not the best place to get expert information. And even a reptile specialized pet store, you're not going to have necessarily ball python experts or whatever snake you're getting. You're not necessarily going to have experts in that particular snake at that store. So do all your research first, then go to your reptile specialty store and see if they have what you're looking for. Why do I, why is my beard hair doing that? Now here's one rare upside to buying a snake at a chain store. Sometimes you can walk in there and you'll see a fancy ball python. The chain stores call any morph fancy because number one, they, they probably don't know what the morph is, but even if they did, even if they had somebody that was like a ball python guy that could identify the, the genetics and the snakes that they bring in, they don't want to guarantee to a customer that it's a certain genetic when, you know, a year later, the customer could come back on that. So they just call it anything that's not a normal ball python, they call it a fancy and they put a higher price on it. Maybe it's a hundred dollars more. So I don't know how much more, but, uh, sometimes you can get lucky because the, the distributor has, um, or the, the wholesaler has accidentally thrown in like a banana pie or something like that in with all these other, like just single gene Mojaves and pastels and stuff like that, that they're going to label fancy. And you might be able to find a really cool morph at Petco, uh, for really cheap. By the way, as a side note, Damara, who I'd pull out, but she's in shed right now. Maybe I'll roll some B-roll of her. I love Damara so much. She's just a pinstripe, which is a nothing special, you know, single gene animal, but she's one of my favorite snakes in the world. I just love her so much. And she, I bought her from somebody else who bought her as a hatchling from Petco. And I'm so glad that he did because she's a fantastic snake. So you can get great animals at pet stores. You just don't have the choice necessarily. Rescues. If you want just an awesome pet and you don't really care about raising it up from a hatchling, maybe it's already close to adult size, get a snake at a rescue. There's a good chance you'll end up with a normal and that's fantastic because normals are beautiful and they oftentimes end up in rescues. That's a good reason why you should not breed a normal to a normal because you'll end up with a whole bunch of normal ball pythons and those oftentimes end up in rescues. I think it's because, you know, somebody, they're, they're so inexpensive that somebody spends 25 bucks on a normal ball python or 50 bucks or something. And once they're done with the novelty of having a snake, it ends up at the rescue. So go rescue a ball python if you can. You may pay less at the rescue than you would at a pet store, or you might pay a little bit more depending on what the, what the vet fees were that the rescue needs to be compensated for. Um, but it's worth it. If you can rescue a snake, rescue a snake. Oftentimes, before a snake ends up at a rescue, it ends up on Craigslist. I'm selling a snake with its whole setup for 50 bucks. Come get my snake. That's a good place to acquire a snake. Um, you'll want to give it a health once over for sure. I mean, in any of these situations, you want to give them a health once over. Um, but also it'll usually come with the setup and I would say 100% you want to upgrade that setup because anytime I've seen somebody that's bought a snake off Craigslist or whatever, it's usually in, you know, a 10 gallon fish tank with mouse bedding and a big red light. Um, so you're doing your research now, you know what the ball python needs or whatever snake you're getting, you know what that snake needs. Uh, and it's probably not what the person who's selling it on Craigslist has been giving it. Um, because really, if that person had done their research on snakes and they were really into it and totally knew what that snake needed, they probably, first of all, wouldn't be selling their snake. They would just keep it. But uh, also they would, there would be more value in it than just throwing it up on Craigslist. They'd, they'd find somebody um, to, to take their snake. This is a good time to talk about what to look for in the snake when you're checking out its health. Because like I said, in any of these situations, you want to give it a good health once over. And um, really what that means is, is know the, what the body condition of your snake should be. If it's a ball python, um, you know, we're talking about a snake that kind of goes like, like, like this. I wish I had a thing to show. I do have a thing to show. I have a snake. Hi buddy. 
just be a model for me for a minute. Will you be a model for me? Here's here's my thing to show. Here's Ron. Uh, Ron has I don't know if you can tell he's all he's like why did you pull me out of my hide situation? So Ron, you can see okay maybe you can see against against my head. Look at that. Okay. So you can see Ron's spine and then it gradually tapers down like that. You can also find guides online, you guys, of, of what a, a good body condition for a snake should be. He's, I'm trying to get him to sort of straighten out a little bit. But basically with Ron, he's, he's a regular body condition. He's not too fat. He's not too skinny. You're not seeing massive rolls on him uh, when he turns. There's a, little, there's a little crease there. Hi, buddy. Hi, my friend. I see you. And... Um, you gonna check out my face, uh, and and you don't have you don't have prominent spine with like coming straight like spine and then coming straight down to ribs. You've got you can definitely see where his spine is, and and you can see that there's a gradual slope. So basically, know what the body condition of your snake should be, and uh, make sure that that it's not super skinny because that means it may have not eaten for a really long time and it might be tough for you to get them back on food. And, uh, you know, they could also be super obese, which, um, which is like a spine and then you see fat kind of above the spine on each side and big rolls and things like that. Big fat neck instead of, instead of this thinner neck with, uh, you, I don't know if you can tell, but anyway, big fat neck that's as fat as its head. Um, that's a problem. Uh, hi buddy. Hi there. The other thing you want to check for is mites. And, you know, everybody talks about mites and sometimes it's hard to tell, you know, a snake like this is a spot nose and he's got some markings on his face, on his sort of heat pits and around his eyes that could look like mites. If it's a banana ball python, they look like they have mites all over them sometimes. So you got to be careful, um, when, when you're checking that you're not just looking at, uh, you know, natural markings on the snake. Mites will move especially if you touch them, but you want to look around their eyes. Mites like to hang out around their eyes and right in their heat pits, right around their heat pits, the, the mites will like to hang out. Look at that face. Wait, focus, focus on Ron's face, not mine. Anyway, check the snake from mice, you know, check their body too. Things like, you know, down by the cloaca also. Um, oh, look at that pink belly. Oh, you're going to shed. You're in shed. That's a surprise. Sometimes they surprise me because I didn't know he was going in the shed. Look at your pink belly. Oh, the other thing, uh, if, if you're not afraid to put the snake up by your face, listen for wheezing or clicking uh, because any signs of the snake having an RI, you're going to want to check for that. I mean, also, if they're, if they're hanging their mouth open, that's a big sign of an RI. Um, but they could have the beginning stages of a respiratory infection and you're just hearing clicking in their breathing or ju you're just hearing their breathing period a uh, little bit of wheezing clicking stuff like that could mean a respiratory infection so you want to be careful about that too now all that being said if you are equipped to deal with bringing a snake that's not in good health back to health like you're rescuing this snake and you know what you're doing please do it grab that snake that's too skinny and has a respiratory infection and has mites and take care of that snake, bring him back to health. That's great. Um, if you're not, if you don't have the knowledge of how to deal with that kind of stuff and you don't want to have to deal with that kind of stuff, obviously you want to avoid that if you're buying a snake. Um, but again, please rescue snakes, save them, nurse them back to health if you can. Online. This is where you have the most choice and the most options. The downside is that you don't get to see the animal before. I mean, you don't get to handle and interact with the animal before you buy it. You definitely get to see it and, and the, you know, you can ask the breeder or the owner to send you more photos and things like that. Um, but it seems weird to people and it should seem weird because we're used to, you know, holding an animal and, you know, you get a new puppy and you get it from either the breeder or the pet store or whatever, and you hold the puppy in your lap and make sure the dog likes you and then you buy it. And uh, the way we do this now with reptiles is different and it's so that we can get really high quality reptiles out to people that appreciate them and love them. You just can't have them at pet stores. It just doesn't work that way. So this is how thousands of animals get into the hands of responsible keepers all the time now is through shipping them. They go through FedEx 
and there's a certain way to pack the box and put it all together. And uh, there, there's um, third party companies that make sure that it's insured and it's going properly. Uh, and this is how thousands of animals get shipped every day across the country. And the vast majority of them are successful and no problem. Um, occasionally something goes wrong. And when something goes wrong, you'll hear about it on the internet. But you don't necessarily hear about all the successful shipments that happened that day. So I'll tell you that I've never had a problem. I've had most of my snakes that I've bought have been shipped to me and I've never had a problem, but I also have a very small collection. Um, if you talk to somebody that has hundreds of snakes, they probably have a nightmare story or two, uh, you know, about something that happened in shipping. I shouldn't say they probably have that, but they might. Um, but like I said, the vast majority are no problem at all. And this is how really great animals get into the hands of people like you. So I would, um, I would, sh it, it just takes a bit to shift your thinking about how we get animals, you know, and having them shipped seems really weird, but it's not, it's normal now. This is, this is the new normal. Shipping snakes is the new normal. Snakes on a plane, you guys. A lot of people don't want to know this, but there is oftentimes snakes on a plane. I guess that's not true. It's just FedEx planes, not passenger planes. So it's not true. There's snakes on FedEx planes and Samuel L. Jackson's not there to help. So go on to Morph Market and familiarize yourself with how that site works and look through the thousands of ball pythons that are available all the way from $25 to $35,000 or more or whatever and figure out what your price point is, what genetics you want, what you want your snake to look like, or just browse through page after page after page of all the snakes and find the one that you think is awesome. Then click inquire to buy. Send the, the breeder or the, the keeper of the snake uh, a, a little message. And what I like to do is I'll send a message back and forth once or twice, but then if I don't know that person, I wanna get them on the phone. I wanna, I wanna talk to them. Uh, to get a sense of whether I trust that person or not. This is the other weird thing for people is, you know, you send somebody a pile of money and then they send you a snake. That's so weird, but it works. These are, these are typically breeders or, you know, if somebody has signed up with a Morph Market account, they are a breeder um, usually, and they want a good reputation. So even though there are PayPal protections and credit card protections and stuff like that, Still, you can usually trust these people just because they want to maintain a really good uh, uh, reputation. And if they have a bad review, that could kill their business. So um, you, most of these people are pretty trustworthy, but I still like to get these people on the phone. I wanna to talk to them. And if it's somebody that I don't know or, or that I don't have references for, you know, I'll, ch I'll check on Morph Market. You can l see what their rating is on Morph Market and other people's reviews but I still want to get a sense of these people. So for instance, there was, there was a snake that, that I was interested in fairly recently. And I messaged the guy, this was a very small operation, looked like a new, uh, breeder, new, new person on morph market. So those ones you want to be really careful about if they're brand new to morph market. And I sent him a text message and his reply to me was two sentences and neither one were like, complete sentences. And I'm not saying that the person you buy from has to have really good grammar, but that just the littlest things will turn me off and I'll go, okay, that's not who I want to buy a snake from. So I'm never desperate for an animal. I want to make sure that I'm buying the right animal from a person that I, that I really trust. And just a little thing like that will make me step back and go, nah, I don't think so. Anyway, uh, get a sense of who you're buying from is my whole point in that story. You can sometimes negotiate the price a little bit, but please remember that these breeders have spent tons of time and money and effort into producing these incredible animals. And uh, it's not cool to try to pay less than what the animal is worth. If you see an animal that you really love and it's way too expensive, you gotta just move on, you know? That, and maybe that breeder is, is trying to charge more for it then then maybe it is worth it at that time and these you know the prices change daily on these as far as what what people want to pay but if somebody's way out of the ballpark they're way out of the ballpark 
just let that one go and there will be something else. So, you know, as much as you can negotiate a little bit as far as like, I think it's appropriate to see if they'll pay for shipping, you know, um, or whatever. I don't think, you know, trying to offer a third of what that animal's worth or, or whatever is not cool. Also, please don't start a conversation with a breeder about a snake unless you really have intention in buying that particular snake. Uh, there's a lot of tire kickers out there and it wastes a ton of time for a breeder to answer general snake keeping questions uh, to somebody that has no intention of actually buying their snake. Even if, you know, even if you go, oh, well, I plan on buying something from them at some point, just wait till you're ready to buy and then ask whatever questions you need to, you need to ask. And if it's general questions, you can find that information online, you know, watch videos and stuff like that. Just keep doing research. But, uh, especially these bigger breeders, um, they're, they're busy, you know, they, they do want to talk to you because they want to sell snakes, but they're also really busy. So just keep that in mind and, and try to be uh, courteous of their time. By the way, the other way that I go about buying a snake is, if I know a breeder, you know, there's a, a handful of breeders that, that I know and like and respect. If there's a very specific snake that I want, I'll call up that breeder and say, hey, I'm looking for a adult female ivory. Do you have one? And, you know, if, uh, if, if they don't, if they're like, uh, um, I, yeah, I have several, but they, they're laying eggs right now. So I'll have them available in a couple months. Then you get on a list, you know, or I'm looking for a hatchling um, little hatchling, uh, exanthic. What do you have? Oh, well, I have a clutch coming up. You can get on a list. So I always like to check with people that I know first before going on morph market and finding somebody random that has a really great snake, but I don't know that person. So there are a number of ways of going about finding a perfect snake for you. They're all valid and they all work fine. My personal preference is always to go to a breeder that I know and ask them if they have a specific snake. Uh, and then looking on Morph Market and doing it that way. Uh, but the other ways work as well. Kent, why don't you do the sign off? Kent isn't here because I ate him. He was delicious. Mm -mm -mm. Just kidding. I'm, he didn't eat me. I'm still alive. Thank God we were all concerned. Gotcha. <laughs> like and subscribe and uh, get sticker packs if you want them. The information's in the description below. Watch out for me. I hope I don't haunt your nightmares. He will.